Yo, what's good, YouTube? This is Jay from TNJ, and welcome back to the New Orleans Kings franchise. And we're sitting here close to All Star break at 57 and 39, chasing the LA Angels. They're 62 and 35. So let's just hop into this last game before the All Star break. We're down by one run in the top of the ninth inning, one out, maybe a chance to take some momentum back here in this division as Carlos Santana is up to the plate and he swings at one high in the zone. That will make it two outs in this inning as that brings up Michael Brantley. Let's see what he can do. He's one for four on the day. He hits one hard up the middle and that one is going to get down in center field. And now guys on first and second here, two outs, a chance to be a hero here as we bring in Billy Hamilton off of the bench to pinch run for Brantley at first for the potential go ahead and run. Jesus Aguilar to the plate. So here he is on the first pitch. He hits one right over the middle of the plate, and it's just going to be a pop-up to right, and that one will do it here in this one. The last game before All-Star break, L.A. takes advantage. They get the win. Trout is player of the game. And we go into All-Star break, 57 to 57 and 40 and we move into the festivities. Nolan Arenado is the home run leader on the year. I'm not sure those overalls are right because he is not 85 overall. I think that's 85 power. And then just looking at what he's done so far, 31 home runs, 11 at bats per one home run for him. But then uh, Jordan a a lot. I can't even talk, Alvarez. Jordan Alvarez gets the uh, home run derby champion. And you just see how he did here. And looking at the bracket, he did pretty well. Took care of business. I made it so it was like a one-minute round. So that's why there were less home runs. But he did get the home run crown. So now we move into all-star break. And just looking at the all-stars here in the AL, I'm looking for any pitchers that we have. And I just do not see any except Brad Hand, who we just acquired via trade in the offseason. He had a 113 whip. He started out a little slow, but ended up having 21 saves on the year. He has four blown saves. I don't like that at all, but he he's doing better. He's doing well for us so far in the middle of the season now. And looking at how he started, started out pretty slow. But now he's recovered. So let's look at the uh, offensive side of the ball. And Carlos Santana, no surprise here, he is an all-star all hitting 313. But where's everybody else? I mean, we have guys hitting well over 300, and nobody is here. But Marcus Simeon is here. He hit 274 for us last year, and then hits 300 with Texas, and he is an all-star. But nobody else. Corey Lee finishes second with catchers for the second straight season. How does he not get in? Honestly, because you need two catchers in the All-Star game. You're not going to just have one. And he got snubbed. And then Jesus Aguilar is second for first baseman, hitting 286. And not only that, Jay Cave hit 325. And he's third in the AL in average and still did not make the all-star game just incredible the all-star snubs for our team the last two years have been crazy we have nobody pretty much in this game except carlos santana we have brad hand but i don't even think brad hand deserved it and the other guys did so here is carlos santana in the all-star break i usually just like to cover our guys he's facing jacob de Gram on that one he swings and misses at a terrible pitch and now here he is up in the fourth inning. He's 0 for 1 so far on a 3-2 count. Guys on first and second. And he hits this one deep. And that is going to carry. And it's going to be gone. That one will extend the AL lead 5-0. And we take that lead. Carlos Santana goes deep in the All-Star game. 430 feet to left field. So now after that, I bet he's one for two with three RBIs and a home run as he comes up versus Noah Sindergaard and hits one to the right side. And his third at bat is just going to be a ground out. But he does end up getting the most RBIs in this game. He goes one for four and actually wins MVP. 
So Carlos Santana, he will be a free agent next season, remember, because we traded for him on a one-year deal. I thought it was a good deal to get us into the playoffs, and it ends up paying off a little bit. He gets MVP. So let's look at the stats so far. And this is what I was talking about. Look at this. I mean, we have four guys over 300. Nate Barron is just scraping 300. He's at 299. Jake Cave and Jeremy Pena both could have had all-star consideration. Maybe Jeremy Pena, maybe not because he had less games so far. But, I mean, Cave is an absolute snub. I don't even know what happened there. Justin Thompson's hitting 266. Corey Lee's hitting around that same thing. Yanni Hernandez has actually got his average up now to 264. So really just letting him take a step back has really got him going. Scooter's down there, though, with 240 in kind of a bench roll coming off the bench when he needs to. But, man, David Bodie is hitting 228. Look at the drop-off, literally 100 points lower than last year. That is just incredible. He's got nine home runs, but you got to move him down the lineup now. I mean, he's not producing, and honestly, I don't know what has happened, but I don't know. I have no idea. Maybe the push from the young guys now has got him a little spooked and off of his game. I'm not even sure. Now, Pablo Lopez did get hurt. A couple of episodes ago, he's coming back pretty soon within the next week, so I'm glad to have him back. Alex Claudio, how did he not get the all-star nod? He's He has less than one whip, 50 innings pitched. I mean, this guy is lights out. I have no idea. And looking at Brad Hand, he's actually worse than Claudio. I have no idea how, how they determine these uh, all-star guys that get in. Nate Jones looks like he's having a better year than what he started with he and Middleton's is moving him up though 0.85 whip in 13 innings pitched that is really really good I'm excited for him on our squad now as we move into the uh AAA all-star game and the Pacific Coast League is interesting because we do not have many guys that are good to be honest at the AAA level not too many on the offensive side of the ball our only two all-stars are Lorenzo Quintana and Jamie Ritchie two catchers so that's just really interesting Lorenzo Quintana is in his 30s now and he is kind of a backup catcher in our organization if our one of our catchers got hurt he would definitely get moved up that's no surprise no problem there because he does have MLB experience as well let's see what he does in this game as he has is 0 for 2 so far with that pop up back to the mound and now he comes up here to in a two and one count 0 for three in this game but we decide to pinch hit jamie ritchie for this at bat so here he comes into the game and he gets walked so a very boring triple a all-star game for our team for our organization but we do end up losing this one as the uh il all-stars get the win in this one and really, you know, I am just kind of shook by Jake Cave not going to the All-Star game. I think he deserved it. And now we just move on, on in the season. And hopefully we string together some wins to catch the Los Angeles Angels. So here we are, Michael Brantley at the plate here in the bottom of the seventh inning. Try to extend the lead versus the Mariners. And that is just going to be a pop-up to the left side of the field. And let's see if we get the victory in this one. And we don't. The Mariners win. They were a 22-win team going into that game. They get their 23rd win, 4-3 here. As Ramil Tapia went 2-5, for five. Jeremy Payne went 1-5. for five. Didn't have a very good offensive game in that one. So now we move on in the schedule, facing the Mets now. 2-2 two two in the bottom of the ninth inning with a chance to win this game. Another crucial win. We need to string together these small wins because the Angels just keep winning. So here is Tapia at the plate. And he swings and misses, and that's strike three for him. And now we cannot let this opportunity pass us by. Jeremy Pena up at the top of the lineup now. One for four in this one. He hits one to the right side. That one sneaks through. Let's see if we do send the runner, and we don't. We actually stay at third base, and Yanni does not risk it. That was hit a little too hard. And that brings up Michael Brantley now with a man on first and third, man on the corners. And we do send the man on the pitch, and it's a pitch out. Perfectly executed. And now two outs in the inning. Michael Brantley continues this at bat, but he hits one up the middle. That one gets through. Game winner for him. Whew, that was close. We get the victory. Jeremy Pena 
tried to swipe two to avoid the double play ball, but instead he gets thrown out. But Brantley still comes through, and we get the victory in this one, three to two, as this is what our month of July is looking like as we near the trade deadline. It's coming up pretty soon. As we have been off and on winning games, we haven't really gone on a big streak yet. But here we are, another bottom of the ninth scenario. This time, Billy Hamilton at the plate with one out. Yanni Hernandez on second again. You know he's got the speed. So here he is facing Dan Winkler, and he does foul the first pitch off. And I believe Winkler signed with them in the offseason. I'm not really sure. I think he did. And here is Billy Hamilton. He hits one, two, the second baseman. That one goes nowhere. But you can just see why I have Justin Thompson and these other guys in the place of Billy Hamilton. He just doesn't make good contact. And here is Carlos Santana up to the plate. And this one is going to extras as we move on to the bottom of the 10th inning. Here is Jake Cave at the plate. He is two for four in this game. The all-star snub. He's hitting in the four hole this game. So on a two and one pitch now after watching that one go over the middle and that one is crushed deep to right field make a statement jake k 420 feet his 15th of the season and that one gives us the win here we need these wins at the end of july as jake k comes through three for five in this game and gets the walk off there and now we start to roll a little bit. We're on a two-game win streak. Let's see if we can just extend it here at the month of July as we head towards the trade deadline and we start to look at the trade block. And just looking at who is on the trade block, you see Trey Turner is at the top. Starlin Castro is there. Mondesi is there. There's some pretty interesting, good young guys that are MLB ready right now. Now, I don't think we need any MLB ready guys at this moment i think we have all the offensive pieces that we need what i do want to do is get stronger in our uh organization as far as prospects go we don't really have a go-to number one prospect right now because we moved up jeremy pena we moved up justin thompson we moved up Teddy Palatitis. We moved up Forrest Whitley. I mean, all of our high potential guys are pretty much at the MLB level. So I look at a couple of guys here. Akil Badu is going to be 23 years old and on the trading block. He's not even at the MLB level yet, but he's got a potential. And one thing that I do want with a prospect, especially an outfield prospect, we don't have any top outfield prospects, is a guy that can play defense and that has speed. Badu meets both of those criteria, so I go back to him. He's got 81 fielding, good arm strength, 81 reaction, good speed. I need a guy that's going to eventually take over in the corner outfield, maybe even center. He looks like a real center fielder. Maybe we can move Thompson over if we acquire him. And because Jake Cave, I'm probably going to extend Jake Cave probably short term, though. And then Brantley's only on our team for one more season after this one. So I start to look at other guys that we can make a deal work with. And I look at Jose Urquidy. We moved him to the bullpen. And honestly, he hasn't been overly impressive. I thought that maybe, you know, getting him in, in, in a relief role would maybe change the way that, you know, his career would look like being a non-starter. But then we have other guys that I looked at we could possibly replace with Jose Urquidy to our Alexander Crow, who is actually doing really, really well right now in the minors. And also, we still have Jimmy Pelko, but I don't want to rush up Pelko. He is technically ready as far as his rating goes, but I like him in the minors right now, just developing him and getting him better. But now, here we go. We are going to execute this trade. And Orlando Reyes is going to be a guy that we're going to acquire along with Badu. He is 20 years old. He's see potential. But I like that he's 20. He can develop a little bit as a relief guy in the organization. And then we uh, trade for Taylor Guerrieri because he does make the salaries work. And it makes sense because we need to line that up, obviously. And he's just a throw-in guy. He's probably not going to be on our team next year or even – I might even – I probably won't let him go this year. But he won't be on the team probably long term. And I just look at other guys, and this just makes sense. Let's just acquire a future prospect and a potential guy. And we trade Nate Jones along with Jose Urquidy. So the next guy I want to trade is Scooter Jeanette. 
but I just think about it and Scooter Jeanette was really really crucial in our playoff run last season I'm gonna just let his contract play out you don't need to trade everybody that has an expiring deal and I think it's smart to keep him on the bench especially if one of our young guys get hurt he has to step up I think Scooter has at least earned that with our team the last three seasons so let's check out our AAA affiliate, The Express, and let's look at some of the guys that we have here in our organization. And that is going to be Alexander Crow on the mound for us. I mentioned that he is a really good pitcher. You can just see right now, he's five and seven. Obviously the wins aren't there, but the whip is there. 116, the ERA is there. It's pretty low. So let's just check him out in action as he takes down El Paso. And you can just see there is a great curveball on that one, a great slider. And he freezes the batter at the plate. And here that brings up the number two hitter who hits a ground ball to short. And that's an easy one. Two outs here in this inning. As let's see, Crow looks good so far. The first two batters that brings up the three hole hitter hitting 262 on the year. And he does walk him low pitch in the zone. So now that brings up Taglia to the plate here in the four hole. And it's just a little tapper back to second base, thrown to second. And that is going to be a force out. And now here we go. Here is the debut of Badu, his first at bat. He hits one to the right side. And that's just going to be a ground ball out. And one thing that if you notice this gameplay, sometimes the camera is off with the batter. I don't know what happened. I updated my MLB The Show. And then all of a sudden, all my settings changed. So like the sliders that I use, uh, the camera angles that I use, they were all reset for some reason. I don't know what exactly happened. So you'll see I'm adjusting the camera here in game. You can see it's zoomed out now. So don't mind that. I'll get it back to what it was. So here is Geraldo Herrera, who is our top middle or uh, infield prospect, actually. He's at third base. I believe he could actually play third base and first base. I'll have to double check that. But right now he's our top fielding prospect, in infield prospect, I should say. And here is Tommy Knight, who I see as our future at first base. But if he doesn't, you know, hit extremely well, probably this year, he's going to have some competition coming into next year. I'm going to have to bring in another first baseman. So here's Lorenzo Quintana at the plate, who was our lone AAA All-Stars, All-Star, with, along with Jamie Ritchie. And now he gets a wild pitch on a 2-2 two two count. He goes deep and hits it deep off the wall. And no, it will carry over the wall. That one just hung up in the air and just did not come down. And it is a three-run home run here for our Express. And we take the 3-0 lead as this inning continues. Let's see what Shane Bauer can do. He's still a young prospect with us. He hits one up the middle. That one gets down in center field. And we start this uh, two-out rally here with a single. As that brings up Dustin Breeze, another young center fielder. But he does swing and miss at a slider up in the zone. And I do want to focus on Akil Badu in this game. I want to see what he can do. He is a lefty. His calling card really is his defense. I think he's still developing as a hitter. And there's no need to rush him up. I mean, I have great young prospects that are already at the MLB level in the outfield. No rush. He's 23. I would say even giving him two years, two more years to develop would be good because I don't need him right now. And just seeing his skills develop, I can really be at an advantage just seeing him really just blossom in the minors. And I think he's got a bright future, but he does not get a hit in this game. I think I've seen some things from him defensively that I really like. His stats and his attributes are really, really good right now. He's hitting about 260 in the minors at AAA. So I like him. I like that trade deadline deal. And that's what we look like going into the month of August and September. As here we are at 66 and 45, we are still in the wild card chase. But catching the Angels is going to be tough. We need them to lose while we keep winning. So now here we're facing the Oakland Athletics to start the month of August. And what a way to start it with David Bodie at the plate. He's having a terrible year, hitting 223. He is extended for his contract. When I acquired him, he was on a five-year, $15 million deal, so it's very cheap, to be honest. But we need him to get going. So here in the bottom of the ninth with two outs, it's just going to be a ground ball to second. I mean, this is the type of season that David Bodie is having. So now we move on to extras again for the second time in this episode. Here is Ramel Tapia, who is actually playing 
really extremely well with the role that we have for him. And he hits one down the right field line and it gets down all the way to the corner. And Romel Tapia, he has decent speed, 70. He is gonna try to stretch it to a triple and the throw is on line, but the slide is even better. Romel Tapia with no outs here in this inning gets a leadoff triple. So anything to the outfield pretty much scores him. That brings up Jesus Aguilar. And that is just a horrible pitch to swing at. And now one out in the inning. That brings up Reese McGuire, who doesn't get much playing time, but he does platoon kind of with Corey Lee. And he hits one down the right field line. And it just sneaks inside the chalk. And that is going to be a walk off here as we start the month of August with a win versus a divisional opponent. That's the way you want to start it. We need to make a two month run and it's either acquiring that top wild card spot or chasing the angels for the division. So that is going to do it here in this episode. I really like what I saw from some of these guys at the MLB level. I mean, we're winning games. You can see it. And even in clutch situations, we just need to do it on a consistent basis. Let's see if our team can close out this season right. Hit subscribe. Hit that like button. Stay tuned. Let's get it. Let's go. I've been working hard for a minute. The ones who don't deserve it seem to be the ones that get it. The ones who speak the truth never get the recognition. But the ones that act foolish seem to get all the attention. It don't matter, though. Yeah. And it don't even matter, though. Nope. Hey, it don't even matter.